Hello and welcome to Hockey Hypothetical. Serious answers to silly questions. Each episode we will be taking preposterous scenarios that we've made up from the world of hockey and trying to produce genuine responses to the what-if questions. My name is Jonathan Fernley, I'm here with Stephen Dowson, and Douse, here's our first hockey hypothetical. This one was sent to us on Twitter by AdSkankster, and it simply is, what's the fewest number of players you need on your roster to win an Elite League game? Let's say that about a flu has run through your team, and loads of players are missing from the lineup. what's the fewest that you can still win a game with? Do you know who I immediately thought of? When you asked me that question just then, the team that first came into my head was the Edinburgh Capitals, uh, which granted isn't the team that everybody thinks of. But when I think of like minimum teams, when I think of players and franchises trying to do something on minimums, I swear towards the end of their existence they were fielding about 14 skaters, if that. Yeah, there, there were some where they'd, they'd tweet out their lines and it would be two lines plus a couple of spares. It'd be eight forwards, essentially. And yeah, then you yeah, might yeah. be able to scrape 5D together. So 13 skaters, a goalie, and a backup who's never going to really play. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <sighs> Am I right in thinking that some a team has won with 11 back in the day? 11 yes, skaters like and a couple of goals. I think Newcastle may have done it. Yes, and I think this goes a long way to say the modern league, because I had a chat with David Sims about this, because he used to be a bench coach for the Solihull Barons, mm. and he tells the story of Shudra, uh, Rocket Ron, where he would basically just skate 60 minutes. You know, he'd come towards the bench and he'd say, what are you doing, Ron? Turn around, go back, you know. And whilst a lot of that is just how much they relied on Ron. It really does show that that even back then, you could play your elite players for extended periods of times against certain opposition. But I think the question's about the modern league and the modern elite league. And that Edinburgh Capital side did not do very well, you know. No. Uh, five wins all season. Um, yeah. And there have and been I other... Think- Poor Edinburgh sides. The one from 20, uh, 2010, 2011. They may have won more games earlier in the season, but they were losing all of their games seemingly by double figures, even yeah. against two other teams at the bottom towards the end of the season. There could so, be another team that poor again in the future of the Elite League. So, how many of sort of Cardiff's dominating roster do you th- need? That's the thing. I, I, I think you've got to pick a year. And you've got to pick the team of the year. So I think, naturally, we've got to go last year. Naturally, we've got to play with Cardiff, you know. Um, We have to have selective flu. If we lose Bounds, you know, and Bentevolio and et al., I think we're in trouble, you know. If... To be honest, you're going to be struggling to find a weak link in this Cardiff side. It, it is, but I'm, I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to kind of theorise is, you know, could you do it with 11? Have no backup net minder. Well, you'd have, well, now I know Ads Gangster said with not minimum regulations, but you have to nominate a backup net minder, don't you, for your, for your games. They can, um, still, they can still dress as a forward, but they yes. are the nominated net minder. Yes, so... We're going to go with this idea that you can... So we just need one netminder. Um, I don't think... You know, I think many Elite League sides could do a lot of their season without their backups. That's not a disrespect to the backups. It's just how we play the season. So there's one. Now, it's how valuable you see the roles of forwards and defensemen in the league, especially in the modern league, especially how quick it is. Because I toyed with the idea of I think you could win a game with three defensemen and about five or six forwards, and I think you could win. The the opposition would have to be perfect. But I toyed with the idea that basically you have a rotating single defenseman just going through the certain lines. 
I then and then that brought me to this idea of then you basically have rotating two forwards. So one forward's always in rotation. And that means you can healthfully keep your players on the ice. And no and they'd still be playing a lot of hockey, but nobody would be playing more than you know, just over half a game. But then the thing immediately hit me, <laughs> which is where I think this team would immediately fall down and definitely lose, is if they ever took a penalty <laughs> of any kind. Um, because, you know, lose a defenseman, that's a lot of work those two defensemen are going to have to put in and you're going to concede and they're going to score goals. So I think even with the best players, and I know Ads Gangster said, how would an NHL team do? Um, I'm going to kind of ignore that because... That's, I mean, even for us, that would be really hard to predict. The gap between the top NHL team and the bottom NHL team is small compared it's to so the top small. elite league team and the bottom yes. elite league team. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And so I think, for example, a two-line uh, Blackhawks team still gets humped by a four-line... Oh, who was bad last season? Uh, Ducks team. <laughs> you, you know, um, as a Ducks fan, I can say that. You know, I still think that's how close it is in the NHL. So the question is, does a two-line Elite League side win against a four-line Elite League side? Yeah, a two-line side can win. Two-line teams have won before. You, you look at some of the, the rosters. If it's a stacked two lines, then it can go up against a very weak third and fourth line you, I'm also not even sure you need six forwards because thinking two yeah, lines that'd be the one, it's six that'd forwards be the one and four I'd D say. can you get down to five so you send three forwards out and I think the Stingrays have done this before although yes. they sort of did it across seven forwards rather than across five when there's a line change you don't take all three off let's say you take off left wing and centre and then you bring on a new left wing and centre then at the end of the next yeah. shift your centre and your right wing come off. And then at the end of your next shift, your left wing and your right wing come off. So every forward takes a turn to stay out for an extra shift. So you've always got two new fresh players, but always yep. one remains out. If you can do that with your three defencemen, one comes off, one comes on, then the other comes off. Can you win with eight skaters and a goalie? Can you? I think nine is literally the lowest you can go without someone playing 60 minutes. You need that extra player, don't you? You just need that extra one for, for that rotation. And then you've really got to avoid the penalty box. You feel like yeah. you I mean, cannot even see the penalty box. They can all be imports. They can all be, you know, if we're talking that Cardiff team, they can all be Joey Martin and Andrew Hotham. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're because... having selective flu and removing some of the Brits that don't play, you know, your third defensive pairing. We're keeping the cream of the cream, and we're playing against a poor side. You know, they might have all their players available, but they're a poor side. And remember, in the game itself, you know, the few bouncers can go their way. They can get the best of the calls. They don't even need to win the game outright. Keep it tight. Win it in overtime. You know, win it in a shootout. They'll be knackered. Surely can, that's the last can, thing this team want. If they can do 60 minutes. Also, if you put Cardiff's three best players out on the ice and told them, don't let the opposition touch the puck for five minutes. I bet they come pretty <laughs> close to managing it. So the scenario we've got to kind of create, it, it, as of all these things, is the perfect scenario. What we're saying is last season, Cardiff could have put on the ice nine players against the worst team of last season, which was Edinburgh. But the problem with that is Edinburgh never feel, fielded a full squad either. It's it's almost not a perfect scenario because it's it's two and a half lines versus two lines and two very good lines. So let's go up the league table a wee bit where we start hitting teams that were consistently using three slash four lines. Do they beat the Coventry Blaze? You know, and again, we're going to assume they're at home that the Cardiff are at home. They've got the ideal conditions. It's their best nine available. Does that nine beat the Coventry players? Or are they competitive? Because, I mean, we don't know if they'd win, but would they be competitive? And I am tempted to say that at nine, they would, 
at eight, they wouldn't. And it's so weird that I think that one player is so important. Cardiff destroyed Coventry almost every time they played last season anyway. They seem to be on a, a huge winning streak against them. Um, yes. But it, it, it just feels like there is that tipping point. Once you get solo, I don't think you can keep an elite league player out there for, you know, forced upon them 60 minutes. You can't. They're going to have to have some breaks. I mean, during sort of the, the great Dundee side of a few years ago, they were mm. just rolling essentially those two top lines of forwards. Um, yeah. It seemed like when they had Rory Rawlick, he never left the ice either. But you yeah. have to leave the ice at some point. You can't just have two defencemen. You have to have three. You've got to have mm. a break at some point. And if it's the same for forwards, I think you need five. I think three and five is the absolute minimum. The other scenario we could throw into this is the schedule of the games. If one team that has lost all the players is only playing one game on a Sunday and their opposition, fully stocked bench and all, but has had a long road trip for a Friday night game, say they've flown to Belfast and then they've had to drive all the way to Guildford on the Saturday and then they've had to drive all the way to your venue on the Sunday... Add in all that travel, make them tired before the game starts. Can twenty tired players lose to nine or ten fresh ones? Yeah, they can. So that's another thing that's got to be taken into account: bus legs. Because if you can do the damage early, when your players are fresh, if you can, as Cardiff often do, race out into an early lead inside that first period, then you've got the game in hand and you can just cruise it through. It brings up another question, doesn't it, of how you would coach that side as well. Like, do you say, right, lads, first 10 minutes, go for the jugular, see if we can win this outright? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's. You've got to manage your energy, but it's easier to manage your energy with a three goal lead. Yeah. And you think that's the way you, you go it? You go bang, 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 get three goals. I don't think the team that's undermanned is. Launching a furious third period comeback. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. I think they do have to start really, really strong. Um, so we definitely think nine, but we think eight. That's when the legs would just show, and it would because ha- the thing is, it's like, it, 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 would it be impossible? It wouldn't be impossible, but you're requiring the no. other team to be very, very poor. Yeah, you're asking a lot, aren't you? So, yeah, we think, like I say, when I was tossing it about, I was saying three defensemen, and I was saying five forwards, and your goalie, there's your nine. Uh, Hope no injuries, and stay out the penalty box. For God's sake, stay out the penalty box. Jonathan, my question. Um, one of the things that they always talk about in every league is how can we get more goals? And they've tried stripping down pads on netminders. They've tried all sorts of things. And, and I've thought of a simple solution. My solution is let's make the goals two times bigger. How does that change the way we play hockey? Okay, so the math teacher in me wants you to confirm what you mean by two times bigger. Are we talking twice as wide and twice as high? Yes. Okay, that's four times bigger then. Um, okay. But yeah, okay, so we're just making the goals bigger, essentially. We can we can yeah. leave it at that. The yeah. first thing that immediately comes to mind is, if the goalie comes out further, you can narrow the angle. A goalie one foot in front of you covers the goal however big it is. You know, a goalie a foot in front of you covers a football-sized goal. Never mind a hockey-sized goal. So if you make the goals bigger, the goalie has to be more aggressive. So if the goalie's further out, that just opens up a whole load of other types of goals. But if you know your goalie's doing that, defensively you can prepare for it. There are going to be more goals, that's unavoidable, the nets are bigger. But if you have a goalie that's more aggressive, you can defend around that and take away the passes. That So, you know, when the Puck's in the slot and the forward's about to shoot. The goalie is right on top of them. You know as a defenceman that guy in possession is not shooting. He's looking to the side of the goal. And that's where your defenceman will be placed. If the goalie's back on his line, you can't reach the sides of the net. You just can't do it. But 